Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're gonna go over the details of how to assemble your Lead Machine 1515. This is one of the largest machine configurations that's offered by Open Builds, and it's all lead screw driven transmission, thanks to the new tensioning system that's been applied to all lead screws on all axes. So let's go over some of the details of this machine configuration now. Over here on the right side of the machine, you'll see that our Y columns are supported by two C-beams for an extra rigid configuration. We also have joining components like our cast corner connectors that run in unison with the Y columns to give you extra strength and just a really stable platform for this machine to perform well. Over here towards the center of the machine, you'll see that we have two X carriage assemblies holding this system into place to give you a strong and sturdy configuration. This is all mated together through black angle corner connectors that run across each side of the gantry. And we also have added wheels for additional strength to support this whole gantry system. Another cool part of this design is the black angle corner connectors actually allow you to adjust your Z axis. So you can loosen these screws here on the black angle corner connectors to lower and raise your Z axis depending on what kind of material that you're milling. It's a really nice addition to this whole system. In addition to the strength that this machine has, the ingenuity knows no bounds. In this machine configuration, we've actually opened up the V-slot to allow for different mounting configurations to hold down workpieces. You can see here that we have exposed V-slot and four different quadrants, along with the front and back, depending on how large the material is for your machine configuration. Okay, so now that we've explained the details of the Lead Machine 1515, we're going to dive right into the comprehensive build video where I'll take you through each and every step of the machine assembly process. So let's go ahead and get started. On this first step, we're simply going to be assembling our wheels. What we have here is a polycarbonate extreme V wheel from Open Builds. So we're going to have one wheel shell, two bearings, and one precision shim for this assembly. So I'm going to display this for one wheel and then we're going to assemble additional 37 wheels for this whole assembly on this machine. So taking one of the bearings, we're going to pop it into the front face of the wheel shell. Flipping the wheel around, it's very important that you put your precision shim in the middle of the bearings. So don't forget that step and you're going to encase it with your additional bearing. And it's that easy. So let's go ahead and assemble our additional 37 wheels and we'll move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our transmission components, which is our nut blocks here. Uh, that's basically our ac Acme threaded nut blocks, which the lead screw will thread through. These will be assembled to our extra large gantry plate. So in this step, we're going to need our extra large gantry plate, two nut blocks, four nylon hex nuts, which you'll find in the bag with the nut blocks, four three millimeter aluminum spacers, four precision shims, and four M5 20 millimeter screws. In this process, I'm going to be using my Open Builds ball driver at three millimeters. And let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to identify a couple things on the plate. On the front face of the plate, you'll see that we have the stamp here that indicates that this is an Open Builds product and the version number here. So this is the front of the plate, which you'll see recessed holes here on several of the different hole configurations. What we're looking for is the two outer holes here that are slotted so you can actually see where the screw can move back and forth. And we'll go over details once we insert our lead screw on that matter. But what we need to pay attention to is these two holes here. This is where our M5 20 millimeter screws are going to be inserted. And let's go ahead and do that now. From here, I'll be able to add my additional components, which is my spacing components, the three millimeter aluminum spacers and precision shims. So what I'm gonna start with first is my three millimeter aluminum spacers on each screw. And next, we're gonna add our precision shims. Following that, we're gonna go ahead and add the nut blocks. Once again, paying attention to the, the hole configuration, you'll see a circular hole and then we have the hex side. The hex side is obviously gonna be facing up, and that's so we can insert our nylon hex nuts. So make sure that you do orient your nut block as I have it here. Next, we're gonna add our nylon hex nuts. 
Now what I like to do is just kind of place these on top and then I'm going to flip my plate upright and kind of hold it with my hand and I'm going to tighten down those nut blocks. Okay, so now that I have my screws threaded onto the nylon hex nuts, what I like to do is leave it loose. You can see how I can, I can move these nut blocks around. Now the reason for doing that is I want to make sure that my lead screw seats properly into both blocks. So by having these loose, it makes it easier to adjust the orientation when needed, um, when you're actually feeding that lead screw through one block and then to the next nut block. So I'm gonna leave those loose like so. Just keep that in mind because we will be coming back and we'll tighten these down and uh, that'll be part of another step. But for this step, we are finished. So let's go ahead and move forward. On this next step, we're gonna be assembling our wheels and basically creating what we like to call the dual sandwich configuration, which is gonna create a rigid platform for our gantry plates. And this is gonna be our Y gantry plates that we're creating here. So what we have is our extra large gantry plate assembly with our nut blocks already attached. And then we have an additional gantry plate for this step. We also have eight extreme V wheels, four M5 65 millimeter screws, four six millimeter eccentric spacers, four nylon hex nuts, eight precision shims, four slot washers, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, and four nine millimeter aluminum spacers. In addition to that, in this step, we're gonna be using a three millimeter ball driver and our open build spanner wrench. So taking the assembly that we have thus far with the nut blocks attached, we're simply going to be running our 65 millimeter screws through each corner hole. So one thing to pay attention to is you're gonna see the diameter of the holes on the bottom of the plate if you have the plate held like I have it here. These are larger for the eccentric spacers. So it works as a cam to adjust the tension that the wheel has on the rail. And that term is called preload. So that's very important to understand. Um, in addition to that, we have the smaller diameter holes here, which are for the fixed side, which is the aluminum spacers that will be received on this side. So let's go ahead and take our six, 65 millimeter screws we're gonna run it through each corner of our extra large gantry plate. And flipping the plate around, I'm gonna use this as a platform to start my stacking configuration, which is gonna include that dual V-wheel configuration that I was talking about. So I have my eccentric side with the larger holes on the bottom, my fixed side up top. I'm gonna to start with the larger holes first. So those are gonna receive a six millimeter eccentric spacer. And one thing I want to mention is we have a six millimeter stamp side on this eccentric spacer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that facing me, basically away from the fixed wheels. And the reason that we're doing that is that's a fully open position. So if you look at the off center hole here of the eccentric spacer, as you rotate it, that's how you gain that tension to the rail. So with it being at a fully open position, we won't have any complications when we're adding this gantry plate to our v-slot so I'm gonna leave that facing away from the fixed wheels and I'm gonna do that for both 65 millimeter screws next I'm gonna add a precision shim to each screw and following that we'll add one of our extreme V wheels and what I did just there is sometimes you'll find that that precision shim in the middle of your wheel kit gets kind of lodged in the center. So you can actually spin that around on the screw and it'll find the center of gravity and it'll fall down into place. If you can't get it with that, always uh, use your ball driver. You can shift it into place. So next we're gonna add our nine millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. Following that, another one of our extreme V-wheels. And next we're gonna add two more of our precision shims, one on each screw. And next we'll add our centric spacers with this lip facing upright. It's gonna to attach to our additional gantry plate. Once again, leaving that stamped side facing away from the fixed wheels. We want that fully open position. 
Okay, next we're going to focus on our fixed wheels. It's going to be the same process. The only change is we're going to be using aluminum spacers versus the eccentrics. So let's go ahead and add our six millimeter aluminum spacers first to each screw. Then precision shims. Next, add your wheels. And following that, the nine millimeter aluminum spacer. And then add your additional wheels on top of the nine millimeter aluminum spacer. And next, your precision shims. And following that, your six millimeter aluminum spacers. So now that we have the assembly created here for our wheels, we're gonna take our extra large gantry plate. Once again, you wanna pay attention to the front of the plate and the back. You don't wanna stack this on top because at that point you won't be able to adjust your eccentric spacers. So what we're looking for is these recessed sides. Each hole, as you can see, is recessed. It's gonna stack simply right on top of our screws. And you'll notice that the six millimeter eccentric spacers will kind of snap into place. And that's because they found that larger diameter hole here on the bottom. So next we're gonna add our slot washers on top of each screw. And we're gonna go ahead and add our nylon hex nuts to each screw. Now that we have the nylon hex nuts threaded onto the gantry plate, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. So each one of our screws it's gonna receive the three millimeter ball driver, and I'm gonna use my spanner wrench on the back side here, and I'm gonna tighten these down. Okay, so just double check each screw. Make sure that it's nice and tight. You want, this, uh, you want a nice lock on this gantry plate. You don't want any play in the system, because this is all about stability and rigidity in your system. If you have any issues with this assembly, you're going to find slop in your machine. So it's very important that you take the time to do this assembly correctly. Um, another thing to pay attention to is your eccentric spacers. Make sure that these lips on the eccentric spacers lock into that gantry plate. So you can see how mine are completely locked into place. And another thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is during tightening, you can see that my fully open position has moved slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that back to a fully open position. So that's where you should see that six millimeter stamped side facing away from the fixed wheels. Now what I'm doing is just double checking that I have all of my screws tightened down completely. And that is what your gantry system should look like. So this is the dual wheel configuration. And now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our Y columns. This is going to use our 20 by 80 V slot at 330 millimeters. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to be using our Y gantry assembly. In addition to that, we'll need four cast corner connectors, four M5 8 millimeter screws, eight M5 10 millimeter screws, and eight M5 T nuts. In addition to that, I'm going to be using my three millimeter ball driver. And to start this off, first I want to go over how this assembly is going to be structured. This 20 by 80 is actually going to reside on the outside of this gantry plate. So we're going to have cast corners that are going to connect to our extra large gantry plate in these threaded holes. And then T-nuts are going to be on the side that are going to attach with our M5 10 millimeter screws. So before we can do that, we need to mate the 20 by 80 to our extra large gantry plate, which we're going to use these two outer holes on the extra large gantry plate. So we're going to use these two and then the bottom two. So what I'm going to do is take four of my 10 millimeter screws and I'm going to run these through the holes and I'm going to go ahead and thread on the T-nuts. And this is for ease of assembly because we're going to just slide that 20 by 80 onto this gantry plate. So I'm just threading that on ever so slightly and I'm going to do that for the additional three holes. Okay, so now that I have my four T-nuts and screws in place, what I'm going to simply do is stand this gantry plate upright. I'm going to push these screws out slightly to where I have some room in between the gantry plate and the T-nut. And taking my 20 by 80, 330 millimeter 
V-slot rail. I'm going to slide this on to each one of my T-nuts. So once you have the V-slot slid onto the gantry plate, what I like to do is find a square surface. You should be building this whole machine on a square surface. It's very important. But the gantry plate itself, you want to make sure that the V-slot is square to the gantry plate. So what I like to do is stand it upright onto my square surface. And from there, you're just going to press down until you find that, that flat portion and it's flush to your gantry plate. So that's what you should see there. So I'm simply going to flip this assembly around. And what we have here is access holes. So we can go ahead and tighten down our gantry plate. Once again, just double check to make sure that you are flush against the end of the plate. Make sure that those screws are nice and tight and you shouldn't see any gaps in between that extrusion and the gantry plate. So that's a nice mated configuration. So now we're going to go ahead and move forward to adding our cast corner connectors to the sides of the extrusion. So first I'm going to go ahead and insert two T-nuts to each side of the 20 by 80 extrusion. One thing to pay attention to, of course, with the T-nuts is you want that flange side facing the inside of the track. Okay, now that we have our T-nuts in place, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just tilt this to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and attach my cast corner connectors to each T-nut. That way I can slide this freely and align it to the threaded holes on the extra large gantry plate. And we're going to attach these cast corners with our 10 millimeter screws. And I'm just going to thread it into the Tina, that way I can move it freely. So basically, what you'll see on your extra large gantry plate is these threaded holes. So you're going to see one there and one on the top side. That's where we're going to attach these cast corners to. And we're going to use the 8mm screws to do so. So I'm going to get the 8mm screws nice and tight into those threaded holes. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten down my 10mm screws on each side of the extrusion. Okay, now we're going to repeat the same process on the left side. So once again, using the 10 millimeter screws, I'm going to go ahead and attach my cast corners to these T-nuts. And there you have it. This is one of our Y columns attached to our gantry plate, creating our Y gantry plate. This will be specifically for the Y axis. And we're going to assemble another gantry plate just like this. And essentially what you're going to see on your machine as it develops is one's going to reside on the left side of the machine and the other's going to reside on the right side. So you should have matching columns and gantry plates for the Y axis. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our following Y gantry plate. So we're going to have Y1, Y2. This is going to be a Cartesian style CNC machine. So basically what that means is you'll have two Y axes moving in unison. So it'll be one large gantry cart essentially. So what we're going to need to gather, it's going to be exactly the same way that we did the previous steps. What we need to do is go ahead and gather these parts that you see laid out. We have the extra large gantry plate, two nut blocks, four nylon hex nuts, four M5 20 millimeter screws, four three millimeter aluminum spacers, and four precision shims. And once again, just like I explained in previous steps, it's important to focus on the whole orientation. Once again, we want to focus on the two outer holes on each side of the gantry plate, and we're going to go ahead and feed our M5 20 millimeter screws through each side. Next, we'll add the three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. Next, we'll add the nut blocks. Once again, make sure that that hex formation on the side of the nut block is facing upright for our nylon hex nuts to fit in. Add the nylon hex nuts. Okay, once again, I'm just going to tighten these down ever so slightly. I still want the nut blocks to be loose because I want to be able to feed my lead screw through without any complications and to seat it correctly. 
So we will tighten these down once we get our lead screw through the nut blocks on a later step. So just leave those nice and loose and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So in this next step, we're gonna be assembling our second wide gantry plate. So what we have so far is our extra large gantry plate with our nut block components added to the plate. And in addition to that, for this step, we'll need our additional extra large gantry plate, eight of our extreme V wheels, four nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four six millimeter eccentric spacers, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, eight precision shims, four slot washers, four black nylon hex nuts, and four M5 65 millimeter screws. In addition to that, I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver and my spanner wrench, and that's all you'll need for this assembly. So just like we did our previous assembly, once again, it's gonna be the same exact process. So we're gonna start off with our first plate, once again, we're going to add screws to each corner of the plate. I like to just stack my components onto the screws. Just makes life a whole lot easier. So once again, we have our eccentric side and our fixed wheel side. So from previous explanations, you should understand that our eccentrics are going to go on the larger diameter holes here at the bottom. So I'm going to add my eccentrics first. Once again, pay attention to that stamped side of the eccentric. You can mark those if you want. Um, it's really unnecessary if you have a visual of the actual stamp. But that's the fully open position right here. So once again, we want to make sure that the fully open position is set in place. Also make sure that that lip inserts into the hole. So at that point you can rotate your eccentric, but that needs to be actually inside of the plate. Next, we'll add our precision shims to the eccentrics. Just place those right on top. And following that, one of our extreme V wheels. Next, our 9mm aluminum spacer. Following that, another extreme V wheel. So again, if you get that shim stuck in the middle, just get your ball driver and sift it back into place. Following that, we'll add a precision shim to each wheel. And lastly, we'll add our eccentrics to the top. Once again, you wanna make sure that this lip side is facing upright so it can attach to our extra large plate. So that's the dual configuration for our wheels. On the eccentric side, now we need to do the aluminum spacer side, which is the fixed side using our six millimeter aluminum spacers first. Next, precision shims. Following that, our extreme V-wheels. Next, the nine millimeter aluminum spacers. Next, the extreme V-wheels. Next, the precision shims. Following that, the six millimeter aluminum spacers. And now we can add our additional extra large gantry plate. So once again, just like the previous step, when we are assembling our wide gantry plate, we wanna make sure that this outer side with the recesses is facing us, away from the inside of the plate and the components. So when you stack this on, you want the large diameter holes, which is for the eccentrics, to land on the eccentric side, fixed side on the fixed side. You should actually hear those eccentrics kind of snap into place on this extra large gantry plate. And that means that you do have those set in properly. So next I'm gonna add my slot washers to each screw. And this is just for proper spacing. You can see that we have recessed holes. So the slot washer actually prevents the nylon hex nut from falling within the crevice. So that's the purpose of these. Following the slot washers, we'll add the nylon hex nuts to each screw. Okay, now that I have those threaded on to each screw, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this upright and I'm gonna tighten down the screws with my ball driver and spanner wrench. Okay, now that we have the screws tightened down, let's go ahead and move on to the next step where we'll be attaching that 20 by 80 column to our Y gantry plate. So in this next step, we're simply going to be assembling our Y column here to our Y gantry plate. 
So what we have is a 20 by 80 V-slot rail at 330 millimeters, our wide gantry assembly, four cast corner connectors, eight M5 T-nuts, four M5 eight millimeter screws, and eight M5 10 millimeter screws. And once again, you can always reference back to the start of this video where it will list all the parts in this step of the video. So let's go ahead and start off by inserting our T-nuts into our extra large gantry plate which is gonna to mate to our Y column. Just like our previous gantry assembly, nothing has changed. So what we need to pay attention to is the orientation of our gantry plate. We don't wanna mount our column to the back of the plate, so just pay attention to where your nut blocks are located. We can go ahead and add our V-slot to the face of this plate, and that's the location that it needs to be at. So what I'm gonna do is take four of my M5 10 millimeter screws and I'm gonna run it through these top two holes and the bottom two holes. And this is gonna allow us to have access to these holes through the opposite gantry plate. So it's kind of access holes for the ball driver. Next, I'll add my M5 T-nuts to each screw. Just like the previous assembly, we're gonna slide this into the tracks of the V-slot. This really makes life easier when assembling this. So once you have the T-nuts attached to the M5 10 millimeter screws, what we're gonna do next is take our 20 by 80 V-slot rail and we're going to align these T-nuts to the outer tracks of the 20 by 80. So next what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have a square surface that I'm building on, of course, and I'm going to square my Y column up with my gantry plate on the square surface. So once you have it squared up to the gantry plate, we're gonna use these access holes to tighten down those screws to the extrusion. Okay, now as you can see, the bottom of my rail is flush with the extra large gantry plate. It's exactly what we want, a nice sturdy mount, but also square to the gantry plate. Next, we're gonna add two T-nuts to each side of the 20 by 80 so we can mount our cast corners to our extra large gantry plate. Following that, I'm gonna go ahead and take my M5 10 millimeter screws and mount my cast corner to the side of the rail. I'm not gonna tighten it down completely because we wanna add our eight millimeter screws into the threaded holes of the extra large gantry plate. Once I get the cast corner aligned to the hole, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. So basically what I'm doing is threading in the M5 10 millimeter screw to the T-nut and then finding my position to the threaded hole on the extra large gantry plate. So just on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and add my M5 eight millimeter screws to each cast corner. All right, same exact process for the left side. Okay, just make sure that all your screws are tightened down. And that is our second Y column and gantry plate assembled. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we are going to be assembling our transmission components to our X carriage plate. So this should be very familiar to you. We've already done this assembly twice so far for our Y gantry plates. Now we need to do this for the X carriage. So we're gonna utilize our two nut blocks, four M5 20 millimeter screws, four nylon hex nuts, which come with the nut blocks, four three millimeter aluminum spacers, and four precision shims. Of course, for this assembly, I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver. And let's get started by first Taking a look at the extra large gantry plate, we want the nut blocks to go into these outer holes. So you'll see that they're slotted here for movement of the nut block. So we're gonna add our M5 20 millimeter screws to each one of these holes. And next we're gonna go ahead and add our three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. Following that, precision shims. 
Next, we'll add our nut blocks, once again with the hex formation here, facing upright. And then I'll add my nylon hex nuts to each screw. Next, I'm going to stand the system upright and tighten down these nut blocks. So you can see I'm just doing both nut blocks at the same time. If it's easier for you to do one at a time, by all means. Uh, basically what I do is I just kind of hold the screws into place with one hand and hold the nylon hex nuts and the nut blocks with the other. And from there I can tighten these down. Um, once again, we don't want to tighten these down completely. So I'm just getting a nice lock on there. But you can see I still have mobility. Once again, we're going to tighten those down later on when we add our lead screw. So just leave those loose. And that completes the assembly for our X carriage plate. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we are going to be assembling our X carriage here. So essentially what we're going to have is a dual extra large plate. So we're going to have two of these sets that are going to be assembled and they're going to create one large gantry system for the X carriage for rigidity and support. So we're going to start here with the first one, which will have the nut blocks attached, which will be on the bottom of the configuration, which you'll see later on as we start to build this machine. So what we need to focus on is the parts that we need for this assembly. So we have two of our extra large gantry plates, one having the nut blocks that we just assembled, four 65 millimeter screws, four slot washers, four black nylon hex nuts, eight extreme V wheels, four 9mm aluminum spacers, four 6mm centric spacers, four 6mm aluminum spacers, and eight precision shims. And of course the tooling I'll be using is my 3mm ball driver and spanner wrench. So to get started, first we want to make sure that our plates are oriented correctly. The nut blocks for the X carriage assembly are going to be towards the back. So basically the excess of the screws that are running through the plates will be on this side with the nut blocks. So we need to use our bare extra large gantry plate and we're going to run our 65 millimeter screws through each of the four holes. Starting our stacking configuration first with the eccentric spacers. Once again focus on that stamped in. We want that fully open position to be facing away from our fixed wheels. Following that a precision shim. Next, an extreme V-wheel. Following that, the 9mm aluminum spacers. Following that, another wheel. Next, precision shims. Following that, the eccentrics. Making sure, once again, that fully open position is facing away from the fixed wheels. And that upper lip is facing upright. And then we'll move to the fixed wheel side, which is going to receive the 6mm aluminum spacers first. Following the 6mm aluminum spacers, precision shims. Following that, the extreme V-wheels. Next, 9mm aluminum spacers. Following that, our extreme wheels. Next, precision shims. Following that, the 6mm aluminum spacers. And now we can stack on our additional gantry plate. So once again, we just want to make sure that we have our eccentric side mating to the eccentric side and the fixed side facing the fixed side. Okay, following that, we'll add our slot washers to each screw and then our nylon hex nuts. All right, and now we can tighten down the system. Okay, once we have that complete, this should be what you see here. Nut blocks on the back end here with the screws. And that's because we're actually going to be driving our transmission component through this side, which will be facing the back of the machine. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we'll be assembling one more extra large gantry plate for our X carriage. So what we're going to have is simply the wheel assembly that is going to create that dual sandwich configuration. And what we're going to have essentially is a dual extra large carriage plate. So similar to the high Z, those of you that are familiar with that configuration, this is exactly the same setup. So all we're going to be doing is assembling our wheels to these plates and no transmission components are necessary. 
This is simply going to be for rigidity and stability on this machine configuration. So what we need is two of our extra large gantry plates, four M5 65 millimeter screws, four six millimeter eccentric spacers, four nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, eight precision shims, four slot washers, four black nylon hex nuts, and eight extreme V wheels. In addition to that, I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver and open build spanner wrench for this assembly. So to start off, once again, we're gonna insert our 65 millimeter screws into each corner of the plate. Let's start there first. We're gonna start with the eccentric side first, once again, paying attention to that stamped end, we wanna make sure that that is facing away from our fixed wheels. Next, precision shims. Following that, the extreme V-wheels. Following that, the nine millimeter aluminum spacers. Following the nine millimeter aluminum spacers, the extreme wheels. Next, the precision shims. Following that, the eccentric spacers. Once again, with this lipped side facing upright to attach to our additional extra large gantry plate. And uh, we want that fully open position to be facing away from the fixed wheels. So that completes the eccentric side. Let's move to the aluminum spacer fixed side, which will receive two six millimeter aluminum spacers. Following that, purses and shims. Next, add your extreme V wheels. Following that, the nine millimeter aluminum spacers. Next, the extreme V wheels. Following that, precision shims. And following that, the six millimeter aluminum spacers. And let's go ahead and add our extra large gantry plate. Once again, making sure that the recessed sides are facing upright, you should see the open builds etched logo here on the bottom of the plate. And we'll line that up with our screws. Add our slot washers to each screw. And add the nylon hex nuts. Now I'm gonna stand this plate upright and tighten down each one of these screws. Now that we have our screws tightened down, I'm just gonna go in and adjust my centrics to make sure that fully open position is set. And that's what you should see. So now that we have this gantry plate assembled, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be assembling our 250 millimeter V slot 20 by 80 rail to our two X carriage assemblies. So what we're gonna need for this step is both carriage assemblies, a 250 millimeter 20 by 80 V slot rail. We're gonna need eight cast corner connectors a total of eight M5 10 millimeter screws, a total of eight M5 eight millimeter screws. And of course, we're also going to need eight M5 T nuts. In addition to that, I'll also be using my M3 ball driver along with my open build spanner wrench. So one thing to pay attention to in this assembly is the way that this configuration is going to be laid out. So here I have both X carriage assemblies, but one of them the one underneath specifically is going to have the transmission components. So you'll see that the nut blocks are assembled to this gantry plate. Now, if you were to visualize the way that this is going to look on the machine, this is actually the back of the X carriage assemblies. So you'll see the slot washer is visible as well as the screw and the nylon hex nuts. So this is going to stabilize this X carriage and essentially join these plates and make it one strong, sturdy configuration. So what we need to do is add these components here to these two X carriage plates. Now, once again, we want to make sure that the bottom X carriage is the one with the transmission components. And that's the way that it's laid out on the machine profile. So what we're gonna do is take the 250 millimeter 20 by 80 V slot rail, and I'm going to align it to these plates. And basically you should have a flush mount on both sides. And next I'm going to add four 
M5 T-nuts on each side of this 20 by 80. And then four more on the left side. Once again, with these T-nuts, you want to make sure that that lip is facing down inside the track. Okay, now that we have our T-nuts in place, what I'm going to do next is add my cast corners to each T-nut with M5 10 millimeter screws. I'm not going to tighten them down until I line it up to the threaded holes on the extra large gantry plate. So once again, this is very similar to what we've already done with our wide gantry plates with our uprights attached. It's going to be the same exact process, so let's go ahead and get started. And starting with the top T-nut, I'm going to go ahead and thread my screw into place. And what you can do is just simply lift up, slide that down to the threaded hole. And once I'm in position here, I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this cast corner. Next, for the second hole here, I'm going to slide down my M5 T-nut, add another M5 10 millimeter screw, and tighten that down into the 20 by 80. Same thing for the bottom two T-nuts. So now that I have my cast corners in place, next I'm going to use my M5 8 millimeter screws to tie these down into the extra large gantry plate. So starting from the top, working my way down. Now one thing that I'm going to ensure is that my extra large gantry plates are touching. So this is part of strengthening this whole carriage is by making sure we have one extra large plate. So if you can visualize this as a double extra large plate, So once we have the right side finished, I'm going to move to the left side. So again, same process. We're going to get those cast corners connected using the M5 10 millimeter screws and then attach to the threaded holes on the extra large gantry plate with the 8 millimeter screws. Okay, so once we have all of our cast corners and screws in place, one thing that I like to do is just double check to see if your 20 by 80 is flush against the extra large gantry plate. See mine's actually a little past the extra large gantry plate on this top portion here. So what I'm going to do is come back into here and loosen my screws that are attached to the rail. And that's on both sides. And this will allow me to make the adjustment that's necessary to get that flush. And now that I have it flush on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these screws back down. And uh, just a good practice, just double check all the screws, make sure that they're nice and tight. You don't want anything rattling loose once you get your machine up and running. So I'm just going to go through and double check all of my screws. So once you have that complete, you can see that we have a nice assembly here, which is basically a dual extra large plate for our X carriage. You can see here that we have access to our nut blocks on the bottom side. However you orient this, but we want to make sure that we do have our nut blocks on the bottom of both of our C-beam rails once we get to that point. So just uh, double check to make sure that everything looks as it should. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our Z-axis gantry plate. So what we need in this step is our extra large gantry plate. We'll also need six M5 27 millimeter screws, two M5 20 millimeter screws, three six millimeter centric spacers, three six millimeter aluminum spacers, two three millimeter aluminum spacers, eight precision shims, six nylon hex nuts black, and our anti-backlash nut block, which comes with the two additional nylon hex nuts. In addition to that, I'll also be using my 3mm ball driver and my open build spanner wrench. Now the first thing I want to turn our attention to is the anti-backlash nut block. You can see that I have the grub screw threaded through the anti-backlash nut block. So basically I just have it kissing the back end of the plastic on the anti-backlash nut block. 
And then of course the thin hex nut, it's tied down onto the grub screw. So basically what you want to do with that grub screw, if you were to adjust for backlash, which is if you encounter wear in this block, you could tighten this to the right and that would tighten this, bringing this lip up, preventing backlash. So put more pressure on the lead screw essentially. But all we want to do is just make sure it's nice and tight on there so it doesn't rattle loose. And um, you know, just have that grub screw kissing the back of the Delrin there, which is the plastic this is made out of. And uh, that's actually all you need to do because this block in itself being brand new is going to prevent backlash. Now with that being said, we're going to go ahead and attach our anti-backlash nut block to our extra large gantry plate. Now before we do this, we want to make sure that we understand the orientation of the plate and how it matters for this configuration on our Z-axis. What we have here are larger diameter holes for our centric spacers and then our fixed wheels. So the orientation of the plate should be as you see here. So we want our adjustments to be made here on the eccentric side to be on the right side of the Z-axis and the fixed wheels will be on the left. So when placing our anti-backlash nut block, the lead screw is going to run in between both our eccentric and fixed wheels. So what we want is our anti-backlash nut block to be oriented like so. So we have access to this thin hex nut if we do need to make adjustments. And it's going to run into these two bottom holes here of the extra large gantry plate. So taking our two M5 20 millimeter screws, I'm going to go ahead and run those through these bottom two holes here on the extra large gantry plate. I'm going to go ahead and flip the plate around and I'm going to add two 3 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw and two precision chimps. Next I'll add my anti-backlash nut block making sure that the hex side is facing upright so we can add our nylon hex nuts. So that's what I'm going to do next is add those hex nuts and from there I'm going to bring this plate upright and tighten down these screws. Unlike our nut blocks that we left loose, I'm going to tighten these down. So all I'm going to do is ensure that I have a nice square mount here with my anti-backlash nut block that this threaded hole is facing upright. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Now you don't have to over tighten it. You don't want to deform the plastic. All you want is just a nice tight feel and make sure that that block is nice and square with your gantry plate. So that's what you should see there. Next, we're going to go ahead and focus on our wheels. Bringing in our remaining wheels, we should have a total of six. And we're going to use these as part of this assembly and just go ahead and assemble the wheels to our gantry plate. So what we're going to have is three screws on both sides. So we're going to insert our M5 27 millimeter screws into each hole. And starting our stacking configuration, I'm going to work on my eccentric side first, which is on the left here starting with the eccentric spacer. Once again, focusing on that stamped side, I want to make sure that that's facing away from our fixed wheels. Add precision shims to each screw. Following that, we'll add our extreme V-wheels. If you have any issues with that precision shim in the middle, all you have to do is take a ball driver and sift that into place. And next, I'll go ahead and add my nylon hex nuts to each screw. Next, we'll focus on the fixed wheels. I'm going to add the 6 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. Following that, the precision shims. Next, we'll add our extreme V wheels to each screw. And then the nylon hex nuts. Next, we're going to go ahead and tighten down all of these screws. Now, taking a look at my eccentrics, once again, I want that fully open position, so I'm going to adjust those accordingly. And that's what you should see. All the stamped ends are facing away from the fixed wheels. And that is our Z-axis gantry plate. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our Z-axis to our X carriage. We're also going to be attaching our Z-axis gantry plate to the Z-axis C-beam. 
So what we'll need is our two assemblies that we have so far, which is the X carriage assembly, the Z axis assembly. We'll need our 250 millimeter C beam. We'll also need eight black angle corner connectors, eight M5 T nuts, and 16 M5 eight millimeter screws. Now throughout this assembly, I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver and open build spanner wrench. So the first thing that we need to focus on is attaching our 250 millimeter C-beam to our X carriage. And the way that's gonna mount is through our black angle corner connectors. So adding my 250 millimeter C-beam to the X carriage plate, basically we're going to need four M5 T-nuts on each bottom track here of the C-beam. So we're gonna start there by inserting four per side. So that's four on the right side, moving to the left side. So now that we have our T-nuts inserted, similar to how we've been assembling our other gantry plates with extrusion attached to the extra large gantry, we're gonna take our black angle corner connectors and tie those in with our M5 eight millimeter screws and we're gonna run that down to our threaded holes here in the gantry plate. So you can see we have four threaded holes per side on this dual extra large configuration. So turning this to the side, I'm gonna start with my right side first using my black angle corner connectors and my M5 eight millimeter screws. I'm gonna go ahead and position these to those threaded holes on the gantry plate. So I'm not tightening anything down. I just wanna get my plate square before I tighten any of these screws down. So I'm just getting everything into position. Okay, the right side is complete. Now moving to the left side. So now I'm simply lining these up with the threaded holes here on the gantry plate. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. That way I can get a tight lock here on the C-beam. Because what I'm gonna do inevitably is bring this whole system upright to ensure squareness. And then from there, I'll be able to tighten down my screws into the threaded holes of the extra large gantry plate. So now that I have my black angle corner connectors into position, now I'm going to lift the system upright, allowing me to work with my square surface, which is my table. And from there, I can lock my eight millimeter screws into the extra large gantry plates threaded holes here. So taking my eight millimeter screws, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all these black angle corner connectors down. Okay, now that I have all the threaded holes filled with the eight millimeter screws, I'm gonna come back to all of these screws that are attached to the C-beam and make sure that they're tightened down. Okay, now that I have all of those screws tightened down, you can see our configuration here uses the C channel on the facing front of the machine versus it being on the opposite. Now the purpose of this is to give you more travel when adding a bit to the router. So essentially when the router comes up, you have more options when it comes to inserting a tool that's anywhere from two and a half to four inches long. Now with the opposite configuration, you'd be limited because basically your router's fixed onto the router spindle mount that's attached to that C-beam. And at that point, your limitation resides wherever that position's set. So you can imagine trying to lift up two and a half inches of travel and then adding a tool that's gonna limit, limit you anywhere from you know, about an inch and a half to two inches. So we wanna make sure that we have the max amount of travel available on this machine configuration. Another cool thing about this configuration is you can actually loosen each one of these screws here on the black and corner connectors and slide this down. So if you have a really small material and you wanna make sure that your system is nice and compact and rigid, you could bring that axis down slightly to give yourself a closer cutting area to the spoiler board. In turn, you can actually do the opposite as well. You can actually lift this up as long as you're not past your bottom black angle corner connector. You can actually bring this whole system upright to give yourself a little more travel. So that's something to keep in mind when looking at this configuration. 
there really isn't any limitations. You have more options here. So that's why this is designed this way. So just keep that in mind that you do have the ability to adjust this. And we'll go over that in more detail as we get into the build. Next, we wanna go ahead and add our Z-axis gantry plate. And we're gonna adjust the eccentrics so that we're nice and snug against the rail. And this will be a Z-axis configuration that is compact and rigid. So taking the Z-axis gantry plate here, we're gonna go ahead and slide that onto the top two rails of the C-beam. And uh, once again, you'll see what I'm talking about when I say fully open position. You see how I just slid right onto the rail. Now, if you have your eccentrics adjusted anywhere outside of that fully open position, you're gonna have issues when sliding onto the rail. So if you do have a tough time trying to get it snug onto the rail or just trying to slide it onto the rail, make sure you adjust those eccentrics to that fully open position. Next, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our eccentrics to make sure that preload is applied to the rail. All preload is is friction that is applied to the rail. So you have your wheels that are applying friction to your linear extrusion, which therefore is gonna give you a nice rigid Z-axis when you're operating your machine. So what we're gonna do is tilt this to the side and I'm gonna show you how to adjust your eccentrics. So your centrics are all on one side. So what we're gonna do is adjust these in the same direction. Now, what I like to do is do this by feel. So what I mean by feel is I can actually feel the tension being assessed to the gantry plate when I adjust the eccentric. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate forward based on the camera position, which is a left turn. And I'm gonna adjust this until I feel tension is applied to the wheel. And I like a nice amount of tension to the wheels because this is what's really stabilizing your gantry plate to the V-slot, which is the structure of this whole CNC. So you can see when I try to operate this wheel or try to move this wheel, it's actually moving on the V-slot. So if I were to hold the gantry plate in place, it's not even able to spin out. So I really have a nice tight lock to the V-slot rail versus this middle wheel, you can see, I'm just spinning freely. There's really, uh, there's some friction, but there's not a tight lock to that rail. So these are extreme polycarbonate wheels sold by open builds. And they're called extreme for a reason. You can put pressure on these guys. So we wanna make sure that we do have enough pressure applied to our rail. So once again, I'm gonna operate these in the same direction. until I feel that tension being applied. See like right there, I feel that tension. So when I go to feel that, that wheel, as I said before, it's moving the whole gantry plate. So once again, this one, look at that. It's just spinning freely. That's not what you want. If you see any of your wheels like this, at that point, you're gonna have slop in your machine. So we wanna avoid any of that. We wanna adjust our centrics correctly. It's a very vital part of this assembly. Once again, adjusting the eccentric in the same direction. I feel that tension's applied. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the additional eccentrics. Because when you adjust one on the outer side, you might see that it basically brings your plate upright, so you might have to readjust your other eccentrics. But make sure to take your time with this and ensure that every wheel has the same amount of preload and is nice and snug against that rail. You can see at this point, I have a nice sturdy lock on my C-beam. So if I were to hold this, there is no movement in my gantry plate. So that's exactly what you want. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we are going to be prepping our frame assembly. So we're going to need two of our 20 by 40s at 1,490 millimeters. So you'll have two of those at this length. In addition to that, we'll also need 44 M5 T-nuts. Also, we'll need eight self-tapping screws, three of our double end caps, one single L bracket, and one standard single end cap. Part of this assembly, we're going to try to simplify by utilizing our end caps once we insert our T-nuts. These are all gonna be part of the assembly once we add our cross members into, this is basically the front and the back of the machine. 
So your cross members are going to go in between these in a sandwich-like configuration using our double L brackets and single L brackets. So what we want to do is add all of our T-nuts prior to adding the cross members and then we're going to cap each one based on the specifics needed for our electronics as well. So you'll see our single L bracket and end cap are also going to be part of this because that's going to be used later on in the electronics assembly attaching our drag chain for instance. So what we need to do is insert 16 M5 T-nuts in the front track of each one of these 20 by 40s. And once again, we want to make sure that this flange side is facing down into the track. So that's one side complete. Moving to the second 20 by 40, once again on the top slot. Now, this is all going to be based on the way that you orient these, but you know, throughout the assembly, it's a step-by-step -step comprehensive build video. As long as you're following along with these steps, everything will be assembled correctly. So once again, 16 on the top slot. So now 16 T-nuts have been inserted into both of the 20 by 40s on the top slot. Next, we're going to focus on the second slot, which is going to receive six M5 T-nuts per 20 by 40. So let's go ahead and insert those next. Six has been inserted into the second slot here on this 20 by 40. I'm moving to the second. Okay, so six has been inserted into the second slot of my second 20 by 40. So first I'm going to pay attention here to my first 20 by 40. This one I'm going to use just the double end caps on both sides. So I'll use my self-tapping screws on each side and I'm going to lock these T-nuts into place. So taking my double end caps here, you can use either side. I'm going to place this onto the 20 by 40 and using my power drill here and one of my self-tapping screws, I'm going to go ahead and tap into the 20 by 40. So that's one in position. I'm going to go ahead and take my second. So that's an end cap in place. So now you can see our T-nuts are going to be locked in. So if I move this upright, I don't have to worry about any of my T-nuts falling out. So this really convenience the assembly. So let's go ahead and rotate this 20 by 40 around. Once again, I want an end cap in place on this side. It's the same process. So now we know specifically that this 20 by 40 that's going to be used for our assembly is going to reside on the front side of our machine. And that's based on the whole construction of the machine. So this backside is actually going to receive a single L bracket on the bottom with our six M5 T-nuts. That's for our drag chain assembly. And then the top portion will receive an end cap, which is just going to hold this T-nuts in place and also keep you from cutting yourself on the end of the extrusion. So that being said, once again, we want to focus on which side has the 16 T-nuts, which is the front slot, and which side has the six M5 T-nuts, which is the bottom slot. So since this is going to reside on the back side of the machine, I know that this side specifically is going to receive just a standard double end cap. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and position this and tap in two of my self-tapping screws here. So now you can see that this end cap is in line with this side of the 20 by 40 V slot. So we have our top M5, 16 pieces on the top, and then on the bottom we have the six pieces. So on this side, if you can visualize our back end 20 by 40 V slot at 1,490 millimeters, I have one end cap on the left side. As you can see, my top slot has the 16 M5 T nuts. So on this right side, so be the right side of the machine, it's going to receive a single L bracket at the bottom of the 20 by 40 and at the top will receive that end cap. On the front side of the machine, you can see we just have our standard double end caps on both sides of the 20 by 40 extrusion. 
So just a brief representation of what we're doing here while constructing the frame assembly. So taking focus to the bare side of the 20 by 40 that's going to reside on the back side, we're going to go ahead and add our single L bracket to the bottom of this 20 by 40. So once again, whichever side has the 16 M5 T nuts, go ahead and bring them forward for you. So you can see that this top side is going to receive the end cap because it has, it has the 16 M5 T nuts in place. The bottom has the six. So the single L bracket is going to reside here at the bottom. We want to make sure the hole that's closest to the seam here of the single L bracket is being mounted to the 20 by 40. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this with my single self-tapping screw. Okay, the single L bracket is in place. So now I'm going to focus to the top of the 20 by 40, which will receive our single end cap. And of course, we're going to tie that in with our self-tapping screw. Okay, so now we have our single L bracket and our single end cap in place here on the 20 by 40. Once again, this is going to be for the back side. We need these components for the drag chain assembly, which will be part of the wiring and electronics. So let's make sure that we do have those in place. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be adding components to our cross members here of the frame assembly. So what we need to gather is our four 20 by 40s at 1,472 millimeters, all be consistent in length. In addition to that, we'll need 12 double L brackets. In addition to that, we'll need 42 M5 T nuts and 24 M5 8 millimeter screws. Now to start this off, I've laid out my 20 by 40s like this for a reason. Just for a better understanding of how this frame is going to go together, you're going to have two outer pieces that are going to be measured out onto the frame. And then you're going to have two center pieces. Now these are going to differ slightly based on which components are going to be attaching to these linear extrusions. So Essentially, the two middle pieces are going to receive two double L brackets on each side. They're also going to receive three T nuts per side on the top rails. Now, the outer 20 by 40s are going to differ because they're only going to receive one double L bracket per side on the inner side of the 20 by 40, as well as only three M5 T nuts on the top track of one side per 20 by 40. So to get started, we're going to focus first on the two center 20 by 40s. So to start off, we're going to insert our T-nuts. So firstly, we need to add the three T-nuts, which are going to be for our single L brackets, which will be mounting to our spoiler board. And we're not going to add those in on this step, but we want to prep it by adding our T-nuts. So we're going to add a total of three T-nuts per side on the top track of this 20 by 40. So now that I have three T-nuts per side of the top rail of the 20 by 40, now I'm going to add an additional two per side for my double L bracket. And I'm just going to keep these T-nuts close to this edge because that's where I'll be mounting my double L bracket. Now that I have my four T-nuts in place here, along with the additional T-nuts on the insides of the track, I'm going to go ahead and add my double L bracket to each side of this 20 by 40. Now one thing to pay attention to is the whole spacing here and how it differs from the seam of the double L bracket. You have holes here that are closer and then holes that are further away. Now this is for the spacing and orientation of the connecting of one V slot rail to another. So what we need to do is add the holes that are further away from the seam to the 20 by 40. So we're going to mount that using our eight millimeter screws. So making sure that the double L bracket is flush to the end of the extrusion here, I'm going to go ahead and take my M5 eight millimeter screws and attach those to each T nut. Right now I'm just going to thread those into the T nut so I can adjust my position. Another thing to pay attention to is you want this to the top of the 20 by 40. So since our T-nuts are on the top rail here, 
We know this is the top position of our 20 by 40 and how it's going to mount to the front and back cross members of the frame assembly. So I'm gonna line this up to the top and also flush with the 20 by 40 and tighten down each eight millimeter screw. And as you can see, it's nice and flush. It's a tight position. The whole orientation is correct. The ones that are closest to the seam are facing me, which will be attaching to our other cross members. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Once again, we just wanna mirror this double L bracket. So now as you can see, I have both double L brackets in place. They're flush to the top of the 20 by 40. I know this is the top based on where I've inserted my T-nuts. And of course they're flush to the end of the extrusion as well. So we'll have a nice tight frame assembly. So now we're gonna to go to the opposite end of this same piece of extrusion and add our additional four T-nuts, which will be for the two additional double L brackets that we need to add. Once again, the whole orientation, you want the holes that are further away from the seam to mount to your 20 by 40. And pay attention to where your T-nuts are in relation to the double L bracket and where it will be placed. So you wanna match the opposite side. So for instance, mine is going to receive the double L bracket towards the front left of my 20 by 40 extrusion. So now that I have that in place, I'm gonna flip this around, add my additional two T-nuts, and I'm mirroring the opposite side. So however that's oriented onto the V-slot, I'm going to match that on this side. Okay, so as you can see, my T-nuts are still on the top side. My double L brackets are flush to the top and to the end of the extrusion. So this one is complete. We're gonna go ahead and set that to the side and we'll move on to the additional center column that will be added to our frame. So we're gonna repeat the same process, three T-nuts per side. Let's start there first. And then I'm going to add two additional T-nuts per side for the double L bracket. Okay, just laying this flat, I'm gonna go ahead and add the double L bracket once again. Make sure you follow the instructions from the previous. I want this hole spacing that's further away from the seam to mount to our 20 by 40. Okay, as you can see, both are to the top side of the V-slot where my T-nuts reside and they're flush against the extrusion. That's what we want. So let's move to the opposite side of this piece. And let's add two additional T-nuts here for this double L bracket. Once again, make sure that you're still to the top side, matching whatever is on the opposite end of the extrusion with your double L brackets. Okay, we have this center piece finished. We're gonna set this one to the side. And now we're gonna work on our two outer pieces of 20 by 40. Now once again, the main objective here is to make sure that our double L brackets are on the insides of these tracks. So how they're oriented in relation to the frame, we wanna make sure that this inside of each 20 by 40 receives just one double bracket on each side. In addition to that, we're also gonna need three T-nuts on one side that will reside on the top track once again. So we're gonna insert those three T-nuts first. And then for this piece of extrusion, I'm gonna go ahead and add my two T-nuts for my double L bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this flat. And once again, same exact thing, we wanna make sure that the holes that are further away from the seam are mounting to our 20 by 40. Okay, rotating this piece around, I'm gonna work on the opposite side, adding two more T-nuts for the double L bracket. Once again, we're gonna match the orientation of our other double L bracket. So we want this double L bracket to be towards the top 
where our three T nuts reside. Okay, so this piece is finished. Once again, we want to make sure that this piece will reside on the left side based on the orientation of the double L brackets. So we're going to work on the next piece, which is the right cross member, which will have the double brackets, double L brackets facing this side. Just for a visual representation, I'm going to keep this cross member here so we know that we're doing the opposite on this side. So first adding three T-nuts here to the top track and then two additional T-nuts for our double L bracket. Now flipping to the other side, once again add two more T-nuts here for the double L bracket and make sure that the orientation of the double L bracket sits flush to the top to the end of the extrusion. And as you can see, we have two of these cross members mirroring each other. T-nuts reside at the top for our single L brackets that are going to mount to our spoiler board. We also have our two additional center pieces, which will reside in the middle of the frame assembly. And that completes this step, so let's go ahead and move forward. On this next step, we're going to be attaching our single L brackets to our cross beams here all part of our frame assembly. So in this step we'll need to gather 30 single L brackets and 54 M5 8 millimeter screws. In addition to that we're going to need a metric tape measure or standard, permanent marker, and our M3 ball driver. Now a brief overview of this configuration. I'm going to go ahead and do a pan of the frame and how I have it laid out. So as you can see, I have all of my cross beams placed in the center of this configuration. So what we have is our end cap pieces, which is the front here and also the back. Remember the back is actually going to utilize that single L bracket. So if you were to visualize the machine being here, this is the front of the machine profile. So in the back right side, you can see that I have my single L bracket and single end cap placed on that 20 by 40 extrusion. You can also see that on the right side I have my 20 by 40s with the double L brackets on one side and with my three M5 T-nuts on the top track. Also on the left side you will see that the 20 by 40 has the double L bracket mirroring the opposite side and then of course in the center we have our two 20 by 40s that are consistent with the two double L brackets on each side. So this is the layout that you will need in order to construct this frame properly. So focusing here first on the front of the machine basically what we're going to be doing in this step is we're going to take out some measurements and we're going to place each cross member rail here in the frame and set it into the proper position. Now based on these measurements we're going to be squaring this whole frame which is very important. So we're going to go ahead and start first on the left side utilizing our tape measure and permanent marker and we're going to take a quick measurement and then attach that cross member to the front of the machine frame assembly. So what we're going to do here on the left side is measure out three and three quarters from the end of the extrusion. So basically I'm going to put my tape at the end of this end plate here which will give me the end of the extrusion and as I'm measuring out to three and three quarters I'm going to mark that down here onto the extrusion. So all you need is a little mark at the three and three quarter mark and from there I'm going to align the left corner of the extrusion with the mark that I just made. And I'm going to be repeating this process on the right side and of course on the opposite end of the frame. Now taking my ball driver and two of my M5 8mm screws, I'm going to lock this double L bracket into position on the 20 by 40 Now one thing that we're going to do is bring our T-nuts from whichever side, which mine are on the right side of this 20 by 40 I'm going to bring these down. I'm going to make sure that I have two of my M5 T-nuts to the left of this extrusion before I add my 8mm screws. 
because at that point I won't be able to get the T-nuts past those screws. So first I'm going to go ahead and take two of those M5 T-nuts from the right side. And I'm going to place those here on the left side of the 20 by 40. And at that point, this will be the mounting components used on our C-beam that is going to be used as a Y-axis on this frame assembly. So we want to make sure that we have two T-nuts on each side of the 20 by 40 before we start mounting our double L brackets to the frame. So now I'm going to take two additional T-nuts, one on the top side, two on the bottom side to attach this double L bracket. Now I'm going to lift this upright. Once again, I'm going to align it with the mark point of reference that I made at three and three quarters. And I'm going to take my two M5 eight millimeter screws and lock this into place. Okay, now that I have this 20 by 40 in place, I'm going to go ahead and take another measurement for our center cross beam, which is part of the frame assembly, and I'm going to make another point of reference. So from the same location that we measured our last point of reference, which is to the end of the extrusion, not the end cap, I'm going to make a point of reference to 20 and a half inches. Now once again, we're going to use the left corner of the extrusion as our guide. We need to line that to the reference point that we just made here. In addition to lining up our center cross beam here, once again, we want to move our T-nuts, which we're going to have two T-nuts that are going to reside in the center of these two 20 by 40s for our single L brackets, and that's going to mount to our spoiler board. So we're going to move two of those in place before we mount our double L brackets to this 20 by 40 frame. So now that I have my two M5 T-nuts here in position, on the 20 by 40, which is in between these two 20 by 40s. What I need to do now is turn my attention to these double L brackets. So I want two T-nuts on top, two T-nuts on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those from the right side here. And once again, using my point of reference here to measure up that end of the extrusion here, not the double L bracket, but the extrusion. I'm going to go ahead and align my T-nuts and using my M5 8mm screws, I'm going to go ahead and lock down one side first. Okay, so I have the right side locked down, now I'm moving to the left side here. So I just need to position these T-nuts and these ball drivers are magnetized. So it really helps if you kind of go into the center of the double L bracket and position these. And let's lock these down with our M5 eight millimeter screws. Okay, so now we have our center 20 by 40 piece in place at the correct measurement. We have both of our double L brackets in line. We've got our two T-nuts here positioned for our single L brackets. Now we're gonna to move to the next quadrant here of the machine frame. So now on the opposite side of the front of this frame, you can see I have the camera here reversed so we can take a look at the inside of the tracks and where I'm moving my T-nuts. Uh, we need to go ahead and make a measurement from, once again, the end of the extrusion, not the end cap, at that three and three quarter mark. And we're gonna make another reference point there. Once we have the reference point for the three and three quarter, once again, measuring from this side of the frame, I'm gonna come out to the 20 and a half measurement, and that's gonna give me the measurement for my cross members in the middle, and of course, on this end of the frame. Okay, so now that I have my reference points, once again, that's three and three quarter and 20 and a half and that is in standard, so that would be in inches. So we have our reference points marked. So now once again, we're gonna focus on our T-nuts. You can see they all are on this side here on the top and bottom. So what I'm gonna do is shift my T-nuts. I need two in the middle of each quadrant. So that means to the left of this cross beam here, I need two T-nuts on the top row. Once again, for our single L brackets, 
that are going to be mounting to our spoiler boards. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and shift two of those T-nuts down. You can see that these ball drivers are magnetized, which is super helpful. Um, but yes, I have two here in this quadrant. Once again, we're going to have two more in this quadrant. But first, I need to go ahead and attach my double L brackets here. So I need two on the top here for each side of the double L bracket, and then two on the bottom for the double L bracket. So I'm just adjusting those T-nuts. That way I can really get in here and just mount it with my eight millimeter screws. Once again, the reference point, which we just marked out at 20 and a half for this cross beam, since it's also going to be in the center quadrant. Basically what we're gonna do is line up that right side of the extrusion to that reference point. And at that position, we know that we're square with the rest of our frame. Once again, we're measuring out to ensure squareness in our system. So we wanna make sure that we line that up to that front edge of the extrusion. It's pretty easy to do. And then we're gonna line up our T-nuts with these double L brackets and mount these into position. Okay, so now that I have this locked down to my frame, I have my two T-nuts here in the quadrant for my single L brackets. We're gonna to move to the next quadrant. Once again, I want two T-nuts at the top track of my frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and start there first. Next, I want to attach my additional 20 by 40 cross member to the reference point that I just made, which is at three and three quarter. Once again, that's gonna to be to the edge of the extrusion. So I have my right edge here of my extrusion lined up with my reference point, and I need two T-nuts, one on the top, one on the bottom. And on the right side, you'll see that I also have two additional T-nuts, and that's for our cast corners that will connect to the M5 T-nuts on our Y axes. So we'll have two actuators that will attach to this frame assembly, and that'll be for the Y1 and Y2. So those two are a necessity for this assembly. So make sure that you do have two on both sides, and we'll go ahead and attach our double L bracket here. Okay, so now that we have our double L bracket here attached with our cross member here on the right side, we need to assemble the same format on the opposite side. So I'm gonna walk you through that process as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this whole assembly around so I can access the back side. So now that I have my frame rotated to the opposite side, you can see I'm not connected here to my double L brackets. We're gonna go ahead and make our measurements first. It's a good place to start. Uh, once again, towards the middle is gonna be at 20 and a half inches, and then towards the right side, is gonna be the three and three quarters. So you're gonna do that on both sides. So I've got my reference points marked. Next, what I'm gonna to do to just kind of simplify the process is position my T-nuts. You can see all my T-nuts here are on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and position my T-nuts. Once again, we want two T-nuts per quadrant. So we're gonna go ahead and move two T-nuts down to the left side here. So we want two of our T-nuts down here at the left side of the back of the machine. You can see we have our single L bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and sift two of those T-nuts down. So now we have two of the T-nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and sift two T-nuts down so I can mount my double L bracket without any complications. One on the bottom, one on the top. Once again, two T-nuts here at the top for this quadrant. Now we need two T-nuts on the top, two T-nuts on the bottom for our double L brackets. Okay, once again, two T-nuts here and our following quadrant for those single L brackets. Following that, we have our double L brackets. Once again, two on the bottom, two on top. And for this following quadrant here, what we're going to need is the two T-nuts on the top here and that's for our single L brackets. And then we need one on top, one on the bottom for our double L bracket here. 
And then on the right side, once again, we're going to have two T-nuts and this section for our cast corner connectors that will be connecting here. So now that we have that complete, I'm going to go ahead and stand this 20 by 40 upright. And that way I can go ahead and start mounting these into position. So I'm going to start here at the right side. So again, I want to line my reference point at three and three quarter. Once again, I want to go ahead and repeat that. Three and three quarter is a measurement taken from the end of the extrusion, not the end cap, and is measured out at this point here. And from there, we're going to go ahead and align our 20 by 40 here. That piece of extrusion should be lined up with our reference point. And let's go ahead and lock that into place with our eight millimeter screws. Now we have this one locked in place. So again, two T-nuts here at the top in this quadrant. So now we're going to move on to the second cross member. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and align that edge of the extrusion to my reference point. Okay, now that we have this one locked down, I'm going to go ahead and move to our following double L bracket. All right, so now that we have all of our double L brackets in place, all of our T-nuts in place here, now we can go ahead and move on to mounting our single L brackets to the desired locations along our cross beams and of course our front and back portions of the frame. So now adding the single L brackets here, basically what I've done is created my reference points for each one of my single L brackets. So essentially what you're gonna do is take the difference between these two rails, which is roughly 16 inches, which you'll actually have spoiler boards that are cut down to this length. So it'll be 16 inches width, 58 inches long. So my calculation here is four inches from this 20 by 40. So what I've done is I've come out here and I've made a reference point at four inches and I've done the same for the opposite side. Now this is where my single L brackets are going to be mounted. And this is consistent for each quadrant of the frame. So basically what you need to go ahead and do is go ahead and make your reference point. So four inches from each of the 20 by 40s, make a reference point. And then of course for the long cross members, what we have is a measurement of nine and a half inches from the 20 by 40 into the cross member right here. So you're going to make a reference point at nine and a half inches, and then you're going to find the center of 58, which is 29 inches, and you're going to measure from one of these 20 by 40s to the center of the cross member because we're going to have three single L brackets, which that location is right here. So I have all these marked out. That's all going to be consistent. So remember, nine and a half out, 29 to the middle, nine and a half out. Once again, 29 in the middle. So you'll do that for each 20 by 40. And then of course, for the quadrants, it's four inches and four inches. So we'll make all those reference points and then we'll start taking our single L brackets and we need to add these to each one of our marks. So taking my single L brackets, once again, we wanna pay attention to the whole spacing here. We want the hole that's closest to the seam to mount to our 20 by 40. That gives us plenty of room to mount to our spoiler board on the offset here of the single L bracket. So we're gonna take our eight millimeter screws. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that into my single L bracket. And then I'm gonna position my T-nut to the center of my reference point. And that's basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center my single L bracket to my reference point. Now one thing to ensure that your spoiler board is going to mount to this work surface correctly is you want the edge of your single L bracket to be flush here with the 20 by 40. So you can see as I tighten this down, I'm shifting the position, that way I can get it in the center as well as flush to my 20 by 40. It's not cockeyed, so if you need to use your ball driver, you can position these in the correct manner. But that's basically the whole process here. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next and add that single L bracket.
Okay, now that we have all of our single L brackets in place, you can see that our frame is completely assembled. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be attaching our router spindle mount to our Z-axis gantry plate. So what I've done is simply taken off the Z-axis gantry plate from our Z-axis assembly. You just simply slide it right off. Uh, we need to do that because we need to attach the router spindle mount from the access holes behind the gantry plate. So in this assembly, we'll need our Z-axis gantry plate, our router spindle mount, two black angle corner connectors, four M5 12 millimeter screws, and four M5 8 millimeter screws. Also, you can see that I've already assembled the router spindle mount. Pretty simple process. You have a front and back plate with two M5 20 millimeter screws. You simply just attach the front plate to the router spindle mount, and that's what it should look like. So what we're going to do is pay attention to the orientation of our plate. You see the two screws here that are attaching our anti-backlash nut block to the gantry plate. We want our router spindle mount to be underneath that. So on the back side of the gantry plate, with the router spindle mount in the front, you're basically going to align it to four holes. So it'll be a one, two, three, and four. So we're going to take our 12 millimeter screws and I'm going to run those into the threaded holes of the router spindle mount. And once I have those threaded in, I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down, get a nice lock onto my gantry plate. And that's what you should see there. So next we're going to take our black angle corner connectors and support this even more by adding our black angle corner connectors and screws to the bottom of the router spindle mount and to our gantry plate. So we have our eight millimeter screws and black angle corner connectors. So I'm simply gonna tie those in to both the router spindle mount and my gantry plate. Okay, so now that we have our black angle corner connectors assembled here, we have a nice stout router spindle mount here for our Z-axis gantry. So that looks great. We'll go ahead and add that back to our Z-axis assembly. Adjust the eccentrics if need be. You probably won't have to. The preload is already applied. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to bring back in our Z-axis assembly and we're gonna add our motor and our transmission components. So this is gonna be a system utilizing compression since it's such a small actuator. It's only 250 millimeters. We don't have to concern ourselves with whip. So what we need to gather here is our Z-axis assembly, two C-beam end mounts, one 250 millimeter lead screw, which actually has an additional 40 millimeters added to it. So that would bring that to 290 millimeters. So if you are checking it with a tape measure, uh, NEMA 23 motor, we'll need two M5 50 millimeter screws, two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, one of our flexible couplings at a quarter inch, which also has the eight millimeter bore on the other side, two of our eight millimeter bearings, two eight millimeter shims, two lock collars, and eight M5 20 millimeter screws. In addition to that, I'm going to be using my three millimeter, 2.5, and two millimeter ball drivers in this assembly. So to get started, first I wanna go ahead and add our transmission component so I'm going to bring my 290 millimeter lead screw and I'm going to go ahead and thread that into the anti-backlash nut block here at the bottom of my gantry plate. So before I add my C-beam end mount, I want to add my transmission components to this lead screw. So first I'm going to add my lock collar. Following that, my 8 millimeter shim. Once you have the transmission components in place, we'll go ahead and add our C-beam end mount. And taking the M5 20 millimeter screws, I'm gonna go ahead and thread these into the holes, the tapped holes on the C-beam. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and push my gantry plate forward. That way I can make sure that my lead screw is flush here to the C-beam end mount. Then I'm going to press in my bearing, and basically you should see that the bearing is going inside of the C-beam end mount. And from there, I'm going to press 
my lock collar against my 8 millimeter shim, which is pressing against my bearing. Then I'll use my 2.5 millimeter ball driver and I'm going to lock that into place. And from there, we'll move to the top side of our actuator and we'll add our additional transmission components here to the top side of the lead screw. Lock collar first, 8 millimeter shim. and our 8 millimeter bearing. Following that, we'll add our C-beam end mount, making sure that the recess sides are facing outward so we can get our bearing to fit inside the recess here of the C-beam end mount. And taking my M5 20 millimeter screws, I'm going to go ahead and thread those into the C-beam. Sliding the transmission components back into the C-beam end mount, So again, pressing firmly against that lock collar, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. And once you tighten down that lock collar, just double check your gantry plate, move it back and forth. If you have any play there, you need to reevaluate the position of your lock collar. You might be caught in between a thread. You just want to make sure that there's no movement back and forth. You should have a nice tight transmission here. This is a system that uses compression once again, so everything is pressed in and you should have a nice tight lock. So now that we have our transmission in place, we're gonna add our motor. So the top side of our actuator, you can see I have the additional amount of lead screws sticking through. You can see on the bottom of the gantry plate here for our X carriage, the nut blocks are at the bottom. So that's an indication that you're at the top. So let's go ahead and add our flexible coupling next using the larger diameter here, which is the eight millimeter side for the lead screw. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into position here. And first I'm gonna lock in my smaller set screw with the two millimeter ball driver. And that's really gonna hold it into place. And then by rotating this, I'm gonna go to the clamping side of the flexible coupling and tighten that down. And you should have a nice tight lock there. You can see that I can move my gantry back and forth. Next, we're going to take our motor and we're going to add this to our C-beam end mount. So you'll see two threaded holes here at the, at the bottom of the C-beam end mount plate. We're going to attach our screws and 40 millimeter spacers to our motor to those two screws. Now, one thing that I like to do is keep my motor cords towards the back of the actuator. That way it's easier for wire management. So I'm going to take my two M5 50 millimeter screws and thread those through the bottom of the motor and add the two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. So basically here on the flexible coupling, you'll see that the motor has a flat portion here on the shaft. So we wanna align that with the set screw here on the flexible coupling. So you can just simply turn that and then lock that into place. So I'm gonna use my two millimeter ball driver. I'm gonna lock that onto that flat portion of the motor shaft there. And then I'm gonna rotate this to reach the clamping portion, and I'm gonna tighten that down. All right, once you have the flexible coupling in position, that's going to complete this portion of the assembly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be adding our end caps to the top of the backbone here on the Z-axis assembly. So right here on the X carriage, you'll see the exposed 20 by 80. We're gonna add end caps to this and it's just gonna keep it nice and neat here and also you don't have to worry about this extrusion, you know, snipping your fingers or anything like that. So basically for this step, we're going to need two of our double end caps and four self-tapping screws. The tooling that I'm gonna to use is my three millimeter ball driver and a power drill. So basically bringing the system to a position where I can access the top of this 20 by 80, I'm gonna go ahead and add one end cap at a time. And once we have those into position, I'm gonna rotate this assembly back to the front. And at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and make an adjustment here to the Z-axis by simply loosening the screws that are attached to the C-beam. Because what I wanna do is bring the C-beam end mount flush to my extra large gantry plate. So four screws on each side. 
and we can simply slide this forward. And one thing I'm going to do is set this onto a flat surface and press down to ensure that I have a square mount to my carriages. So you should just be flush here to the extra large gantry plate. And once you're flush there, you can simply tighten down those eight screws. And this is also a great display of how easy it is to move the Z-axis up and down, depending on what you're trying to mill or what kind of height you're trying to acquire in the system. So now that we have that complete, everything's nice and tight, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our Y-axis actuators. So we're going to have Y1 and Y2. That's why you see so many parts here, but each actuator is going to be identical in assembly. So we're going to focus on one and build through that assembly. And we're going to take what we learned from the one and apply it to the second. So what we need to gather here for our parts we're going to need two of our 1500 millimeter C beams. We're also going to need the two 1540 millimeter lead screws. Now there's an additional 40 millimeters added to these lead screws like our others for the tensioning components. We also have our tensioning components that are going to be utilized in this actuator. So what we have is our thrust bearings times four, two tensioning nuts, four flange bearings, eight cast corner connectors, eight M5 T-nuts, eight M5 eight millimeter screws, 16 M5 15 millimeter screws, eight M5 50 millimeter screws, eight 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two NEMA 23 motors, RY gantry assemblies, four open builds motor mounting plates, two flexible couplings at a quarter inch, and then of course my tooling for this step will just need our ball driver set here. I have a three, a 2.5, and a two millimeter ball driver. And of course the open build spanner wrench. So to get started, first we're gonna focus, like I said, on the first actuator. So I'm simply going to put the C-beam to the side. So the first thing that we're going to do for this actuator is we need to add our gantry cart. So one thing that you'll notice is on this side, the C channel is not exposed. It's exposed here on the left side. So if I were to rotate this, because I want to add my gantry cart for the right side of the machine first, I'll then grab one of my gantry carts here. So this gantry cart will simply slide on to the C beam. And you'll see that the nut blocks here basically reside inside the C channel. And that'll be for the addition of the lead screw, which will be our transmission for this actuator. So basically what we want to do now is adjust our eccentrics for this gantry cart. It's a pretty simple process. Basically, I'm going to tilt this to the side so I just have access to my wheels. And focusing on the bottom of this gantry cart where my eccentrics are, I'm going to go ahead and make adjustments to tighten these wheels to the rail. So rotating these in the same direction, just like we did on the previous step for the z-axis, I'm looking for that tension added to the wheel. And basically once I add tension to one wheel, you can see it's moving the rail. So I know that I have a good amount of tension there. So I'm going to go through the additional eccentrics. Okay, once you have the eccentrics adjusted, you should have a nice tight lock on all wheels. Just double check, feel each wheel, make sure that friction is applied to the rail, and that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is move this down slightly, and I'm going to add my additional components here, which are the T-nuts that will be added to this actuator. The T-nuts that will be added to this actuator are for the purpose of adapting these actuators to our frame assembly. So basically we're going to have two T-nuts on each side and adding to the T-nuts we'll have our cast corners. Each cast corner will adapt to the frame. So what we need to go ahead and do is add a total of four T-nuts, two per side, but two are going to be for the opposite end of this extrusion. So once again make sure that flange is facing inward towards the, the V-slot channel. 
So now that I have my T-nuts inserted, I'm simply going to move these two T-nuts towards the back end of my C-beam. And that's for my additional cast corners that will be added to this. And for this side, I'm going to go ahead and bring in two of my cast corner connectors with two of my M5 8 millimeter screws. And I'm going to go ahead and place these onto my C-beam. What I'm going to do is bring these back slightly. That way it's easier when adapting to my frame. That's what you should see. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite end of the C-beam. So once again, bringing in two of my cast corner connectors and two eight millimeter screws. And for this side, we need the cast corners to face in the direction that I have set here to adapt to the opposite end of the frame. So once again, I'm gonna move a little bit back from the edge of the C-beam. So now that we have our cast corners in place, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my C-beam back to a standing position here. So one thing to really pay attention to when assembling these actuators is we want to bring our gantry cart forward as far as we can. So we do have our cast corners in the way. So basically we're just going to touch those cast corners. So next we're going to adapt our lead screw. So basically we want this gantry cart to be front position. So when we adapt our x-axis structure to our gantry carts, it's going to be a lot easier to access the front of the machine. So that's just the whole purpose behind that. So next we're going to go ahead and add our lead screw. So basically what we need to do is thread this into our nut blocks. So what we're looking for here, since we know that our lead screw is at 15, 40 millimeters, is an additional 20 millimeters per side. So if I were to take my tape measure here, I can get a good estimate of where my position needs to be before I add my motor mounting end plates and my thrust bearing and tensioning components. So I'm actually a little bit past the 20 mil mark. So I'm going to adjust that tension to where I'm approximately 20 millimeters and you can check the opposite end as well. But once again, you know the measurements of the lead screw is at 1540. So if one side's at 20 millimeters, you know the other side's at 20 millimeters. Next, we need to go ahead and add our end plates to this actuator. So taking one of my end plates here, I'm going to go ahead and position this onto the C-beam. And from there, I'm going to take four of my M5 15 millimeter screws and I'm going to thread this plate into place. Next, on this side, we're going to add our flanged bearing. We need to add our thrust bearing following that, which you'll see a set. The thrust bearing set includes two of these, these washers here, which adapt to the bearings. Encasing it like so, you're going to simply add this to the lead screw as well. Taking our tensioning nut, that's going to be applied next. And this is how we're going to add tension to the lead screw. So essentially the thrust bearing is going to prevent any type of wear on the actual flange bearing. So this is gonna take up any type of force that's in excess from moving back and forth. The flange bearing is actually preventing any type of motion from left to right. So you have a secure system here that's actually tensioned properly versus just adding a lock collar to the end. You would have complications with your flange bearing wearing over time and you'd have to com completely replace that piece over and over versus having a thrust bearing there to compensate for that force that's being utilized moving the gantry back and forth. So adding our tensioning nut to this is basically a simple process. You're just simply going to thread this nut onto your lead screw. I like to find a good position to where I can get the set screw, this, uh, this lock set screw. I like to get it to an upright position so it's easier to access when we assess tension to the actuator. Once the tensioning nut is in place, which should be at the front of the actuator, so this is all a front assembly here, basically I'm gonna go ahead and lock down my tensioning nut, and that'll prevent my lead screw from slipping past. So I know that my measurement's good here, it's flush. 
So that way we know when we add our additional components to the other side, including our motor, we're in a good position to add tension to this whole system. So that completes the assembly there for the tension nut and thrust bearing. So now we're going to move to the opposite end of this actuator. Next we're going to add our flexible coupling. The 8mm bore side is going to be attached to the lead screw. So what we're going to do is simply place this onto the lead screw with one thing in mind. We want to make sure that this set screw is able to adapt to the flat portion of the motor shaft. So you can see here that we have that flat portion of the NEMA 23. Well, we want that set screw to adapt to the flat portion of that shaft so that you have a nice good lock onto your motor. So we want to make sure when we position this that we have that set screw upright. So it's just an easy visual. We can see that and we know that our motor is going to be inserted properly. So making sure that those set screws are upright, I'm going to go ahead and lock down my set screw here. And before I rotate to add pressure to the clamping side of the coupling, I'm going to go ahead and adapt my motor first. And then I'll come back and clamp that down on the lead screw as well as on the motor shaft. So bringing in my NEMA 23 motor along with four of my M5 50 millimeter screws and four of my 40 millimeter aluminum spacers with one additional thing in mind. This is the back end of the actuator. How do you want your motor wires to be positioned? You can orient it to the right, the left, upright. I like mine facing down. I like to keep my wiring nice and neat for the machine profile. So that's how I'm going to position the motor. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and add my 50 millimeter screws to each corner of the motor. And I'm going to add my 40 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. And I'm going to make sure to turn my motor shaft to an upright position. That flat portion is now facing the set screw here on the flexible coupling. And I'm going to feed the shaft into the flexible coupling and position each screw to the threaded holes on the motor mounting end plate. Now that I have all of my screws nice and tight against my motor mounting end plate, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the flexible coupling to where we're going to tighten down that set screw. So on the flexible coupling, so again I have my motor shaft, that flat portion of the motor shaft facing the set screw. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that down to the motor. And I have this set screw adapted to my 8 millimeter lead screw. So now I can go ahead and rotate this. This will move your gantry cart, but that's fine. Just so we can access the sides of these clamping portions of the coupling. And then we're going to tighten those down. Now with that in place, you can see that I have a nice good lock to my motor and my lead screw on this actuator. So that's one of our actuators completed. So we have one more. This is going to be the same exact process. Nothing's really going to change besides the orientation of our C channel. So since this is the back side of our actuator, if you were to flip it towards the front, this would be the right side of the machine. So that C channel should always be facing away from your work surface. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our second actuator. So just like we did with our other actuator, we're going to start with our Y carriage first. So again, just double check your eccentrics. Make sure that they're at the fully open position. So it's just going to slide onto the rail. If not, you're going to have complications. It's going to be, you're going to have preload basically assessed to the, to the carriage. And at that point, you're going to have to kind of force it onto the rail. So we're just going to make sure that those are loose. Mine are. You see how it just slides on nice and easily and we need to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this to the side and once again we're going to come in with our open build spanner wrench and we're going to go ahead and add that preload that we need to our rail which is just the pressure or friction added to the V slot. So I've got a nice amount of tension there on this wheel. I'm going to move to the next. Rotating in the same direction here. I'm going to do that for all four eccentrics. I'm going to check each wheel for the proper amount of tension. You should have enough force on there to where it's trying to move this C-beam. should not be loose. So now that I have those adjusted, 
I'm going to check the top side. And that was a really simple adjustment. And now we have the proper amount of pressure onto the rail for our wheels. Next, we need to add our T-nuts so we can adapt our cast corners to this actuator so it can be attached to our frame assembly. So once again, taking our T-nuts, we're going to have two per side. Make sure that flange is facing up into the channel. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and slide two of these T-nuts down to the opposite end of the actuator. And I'm going to come in here with my cast corners, two cast corners and two eight millimeter screws. And I'm going to attach these to the T-nuts. Once again, make sure that the position of your cast corners are positioned as mine are. We're going to move those back slightly. So again, we want to adapt this to the frame. And now we'll rotate this around and work on the opposite end of the actuator. So we need two more cast corners, two more eight millimeter screws. Once again, these are going to be facing in the opposite direction. So make sure that you are following along with this assembly process and how these are positioned. So with this actuator, I'm going to bring my gantry cart from the back here. As you can see, I've got it pushed towards the front of this side. My C channel is facing the left side. So this is going to be the front of my actuator. My other actuator that we just created is for the right side of the machine. So this is going to be for the left. So we want to make sure that our assembly is positioned in this manner. So next I'm going to add the lead screw after I've pulled my gantry cart forward. I know that my C channel here is to the left. This will be for the left side of the machine. Taking my lead screw, I'm going to go ahead and add this into the nut blocks here. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick measurement here, making sure that my lead screw is about 20 millimeters from the C-beam. And that way we know when we add our tensioning components that we have the same amount of slack on both sides. So now that we have our lead screw in position, we're going to go ahead and bring in our end plate. So again, we're just going to slide this on and adapt with our 15 millimeter screws. Now that we have our motor mounting end plate in position, we're going to take our flange bearing and our thrust bearing. Once again, this is a set, so we're just going to encase that. Add this to the flange. And since this is the front of our actuator, we're going to bring in our tensioning nut. You might need to loosen the set screw here to allow for this to thread onto the lead screw. Once again, we want to make sure that the tension nut is flush with our lead screw here. And I'm going to go ahead and lock this into place. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate this to the back side of the actuator and we're going to add our additional components. Now that we have our actuator rotated, we're going to go ahead and add another one of our motor mounting end plates. Now that I have my motor mounting end plate in place, I'm going to go ahead and add my flange bearing. And next the thrust bearing. So again, we're going to sandwich these together. Each thrust bearing comes in a set. We're going to place that into position. Next, we're going to add our flexible coupling. Once again, making sure that our set screws here are facing in the upright direction so we can adapt it to our motor shaft. And then we're going to tighten down that set screw right here on the top of the lead screw. Once that set screw is tightened down to the lead screw, we're not going to worry about the clamping portion yet. We want to make sure that we get our motor shaft in here. Once again, we're going to make sure that that motor shaft is in the upright position. So once we slide this onto our motor mounting end plate, we can lock that in with our set screw. So using our M5 50 millimeter screws, I'm going to insert those onto each end of the motor. Then adding our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. I'm going to go ahead and put my motor into position here. So now we have both of our Y axes complete. 
These are both now Y actuators that are going to be assembled to our frame assembly. So we're ready to go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be adding our Y axis actuators to our frame. So as you can see, I have my frame laid out here on my table surface. What I'm going to do now is bring in each actuator and place it onto the frame. Now that I have one actuator here in position, we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the cast corners underneath this side. So let's go ahead and move to the left side of the machine. Underneath, you can see that I have my cast corners locked into position here. So what I'm going to do is loosen each one so I can bring those to these T-nuts here, which is attached to our frame. Now basically, I have this overhanging on my table so I can access this. So I'm going to come in here and position my T-nut. And I'm going to be using M5 10 millimeter screws to attach this to the frame. Once I have it attached to the frame, I'm going to go ahead and lock down my other screw that's attached to the actuator. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this T-nut. Now let's move to the back position. And from there, we'll loosen the cast corners. Get our T-nuts into position here. And using our M5 10 millimeter screws, we'll go ahead and mount these cast corners into position. Okay, now that we have this back portion mounted, all four screws are tightened down. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the right side. Okay, now that we have our actuator in position here, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount those cast corners into position. All right, now that we have this one mounted to our frame, we'll move to the back side and do the same process. Okay, so now that we have that mounted into place, we have our two Y axis actuators mounted to our frame. It's time to move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be adding our additional C-beam to our X carriage. So as you can see, I have my frame here laid out. We have our Y axis actuators in place here on the frame. So now I have my Z X carriage assembly. And then I have two of my 1500 millimeter C-beam rails. Those are gonna be running through the X carriage plates on the back of that Z axis. So what we need to do is adjust the eccentrics as we get these rails through. So in this step, we'll just need what you see right here is our X carriage and Z assembly and the two 1500 millimeter C-beams and an open build spanner wrench. Starting this by grabbing one of my C-beams first, I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through the top portion of my X carriage. And basically I'm going to let this set in position because I need to feed in my second C-beam underneath. This is going to be a dual C-beam configuration, extra rigid, a lot of strength that you're going to see from this system. So now that I have my first through the top extra large gantry plate, what I want to do is move my second C-beam into the second carriage here at the bottom. So in order to gain access to my second X carriage here, I'm just going to tilt this upright, giving me access to that X carriage. And from there, I'm gonna feed through my C-beam. Now that we have both C-beams through our X carriage assemblies, I'm gonna move on to adjusting the eccentrics for each one. So starting here at the top, basically all we have to do is we can just maneuver our C-beam to give us access. And I'm simply going to adjust these in small increments until I have the right amount of tension. Once again, I'm gonna feel those wheels for the proper amount of tension. 
double check the top here. And then I'm going to move to the right side. So I'm going to simply slide my C-beam back to this side, giving me access to the opposite end. Okay, once you have the tension assessed here on the eccentrics for the top portion of the X carriage, we're going to move to the back end here and adjust those eccentrics, which will be much easier. We have access to the bottom of the gantry plate. Okay, now that I have those adjusted, I'm going to move to the left side. Okay, now that we have our eccentrics adjusted, we're ready to go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be assembling our framing components. So basically the X carriage is now going to be attached to our Y gantries. So in this step, we're gonna need 22 cast corner connectors, 28 M5 T-nuts, two 90 degree jointing plates, 22 drop-in T-nuts, two double end caps, 22 M5 10 millimeter screws, 28 M5 8 millimeter screws, and eight self-tapping screws. In addition to that, I'll be using my three millimeter ball driver along with a power drill for this assembly. So to get started, first we're gonna pay attention to our 90 degree joining plates that will be attaching to the top C-beam on our X carriage, which is then going to mount to our Y carriages. So basically at the moment I have my X carriage just simply resting against the frame. But what I'm gonna do is come in here with three M5 T-nuts, and I'm gonna slide that into the front top track of the C-beam here. And at that point, I can come in with my 90 degree joining plate, and I'm going to use eight millimeter screws to attach that to the T-nuts here. So basically the 90 degree joining plate is going to be configured in this direction here. So these additional holes will mount to the 20 by 80 upright columns of the Y axis. So just using one eight millimeter screw at a time, I'm just gonna slide these into position. And at that point, I'm gonna bring this upright. And what I'm looking for here is a nice square mount. So I'm gonna bring this top C-beam until it's flush with my upright column here of my Y carriage. And I'm gonna slide my 90 degree joining plate into position to where it can mount directly into the holes of the 20 by 80 V slot. So these two holes here. So once I find that position, I'm gonna tighten down my eight millimeter screws. And now I know that my position is set here. I'm flush against my C beam as well as my 20 by 80. And I'm hanging on to my, my whole assembly here for the X carriage. So this is kind of precarious doing it by yourself. But basically, I'm holding everything in place. And I'm going to add my two self-tapping screws into these two holes of the 90 degree joining plate. Just being extra cautious that I don't drop the whole assembly. But one very useful thing about the way that this machine design was configured is this bottom C-beam here is actually resting against the extra large gantry plate. So that's exactly what you should see. So I'm gonna bring this in close. I now have a square position. I'm gonna come in with my power drill. I'm gonna screw these into the 20 by 80. So now that I have this 90 degree joining plate in position here, I see that my C-beam is nice and square here to my 20 by 80. I'm gonna come in with my double end cap and cap these top exposed pieces of the V-slot. So now we're gonna to move to the left side and we're gonna complete the same process and attach our other 90 degree joining plate to the opposite end of the C-beam on the X carriage. Once again, we're going to add three of our M5 T-nuts into this top track here. And at that point, I can add my 90 degree joining plate. Once again, we want it oriented just as I have it here so it can attach to our Y carriage. So just one screw at a time. I'm gonna 
attach this to my M5 T-nuts. So once again, once we get our eight millimeter screws in position, I'm gonna loosen this slightly. And basically I'm just lining this up to the two holes here in the 20 by 80, making sure that my C-beam is flush here to the 20 by 80 upright column. And at that point, I can add my self-tapping screws. And then I'll add my double end cap. And now we have a nice sturdy column here and our X carriage is pretty much in place. Now we just need to add additional components that are gonna strengthen this whole system. So now that we have our X axis column in place here, it's time to add our additional joining components, which is gonna consist of our cast corner connectors. They're gonna attach not only to our Y carriage, but to the X axis C beams. So first I'm gonna start here on the left side. I'm gonna insert T nuts into both of the C beams that are consistent of this X axis. So on the left side here, I'm coming in with my M5 T nuts and I'm gonna insert one into each slot. And that's consistent for both C beams here. Okay, now that I have the T nuts inserted into this side, I'm gonna to move to the right side and do the same exact thing. Okay, now that I have the T-nuts in place there, we're gonna go ahead and prep our cast corners to attach not only to the X-axis C-beams here, but also to our Y carriage. So in total, we'll need eight per side. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and prep eight of our cast corner connectors, which are gonna receive 10 millimeter screws and a drop in T-nut. And this is going to attach to our Y carriages. So those upright columns, the 20 by 80s, are gonna receive the drop-in T-nut. And the reason for doing so is if you were to use standard T-nuts, they would just drop to the bottom, it would be a pain. So we're just gonna go ahead and prep these, just like so. We need to do a total of 16. Okay, now that we have 16 cast corners prepped, we're gonna use eight per side. We're gonna use our eight millimeter screws to attach to our standard M5 T-nuts. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the left side first. So coming in here, I'm just gonna attach my eight millimeter screw to the T-nut, and I'm not gonna tighten it down all the way because I wanna be able to slide this cast corner into my Y carriage here. And at that point, I'll be able to tighten down this side first, which is the drop-in T-nut. And you'll know when you have a good lock because it's not gonna move. And then I'll tighten down my eight millimeter screw to my standard M5 T-nut. And it's really gonna bring a lot of strength here to this whole gantry system. So we're just gonna repeat that process all the way down and then we'll move to the right side. Okay, now that we've finished this side, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the right side the same exact process. Okay, now that we've finished the right side here with all of our cast corners, we're gonna to move to the back side and add our additional cast corners for strengthening and support. So taking our M5 T-nuts, I'm gonna place one underneath this C-beam here. We'll have a cast corner here, a cast corner above this C-beam. So we need an additional T-nut. And then underneath the C-beam C here, we'll also need an additional T-nut. So like we did before, we're gonna prep our cast corner connectors with drop-in T-nuts, but this time with eight millimeter screws. So M5 eight millimeter screw and drop-in T-nut. And the reason for the size difference is based on these feet right here on the cast corners. Since they are going to reside inside the track, you need less screw. So you're not bottoming out on the rail. And on this side, we'll need a 10 millimeter screw. So in order to access the T-nut underneath, I'm just gonna use an Allen key here. And at that point, I can rotate this and thread it into the T-nut. Okay, now that we have that in place, 
going to move to the top side of the C-beam. Once again, adding an eight millimeter screw to our cast corner connector here. And at that point, I'm going to place it in position and tighten it down. And an M5 10 millimeter screw, we're going to tie that into our T-nut. Just going to use the Allen key once again. Now that we have this side fastened down, I'm going to move to the bottom. Once again, adding another cast corner. Same process, we're going to add the 8 millimeter screw and drop in T-nut. And then adding our 10 millimeter screw. Okay, now that we have this side complete, we're going to move to the opposite side and complete the same process with our cast corners. So on this side, I'm simply going to take my cast corner once again with an 8 millimeter screw and I'm going to tie on my drop in T-nut. And then on the opposite side, to really kind of help with lodging in that standard T-nut, I'm going to take my 10 millimeter screw on the opposite side and thread on my M5 T-nut. So now at that point, I can slide my T-nut in place here. So now as you can see with the T-nut attached to the 10 millimeter screw and the 8 millimeter screw with the drop in T-nut, it just works better for the assembly. I'm going to tighten down my drop in T-nut first. And then I'm going to come in here to my additional screw. And I can actually get in there with my ball driver at an angle. So now that that's complete, we're going to come back and add the 10 millimeter screw once again with our T-nut. 8 millimeter screw with the drop in T-nut. And we'll put that into place here. And for the bottom here, it's again, same situation. All right, so now that we have our cast corners in place here, we have a nice, sturdy, rigid X-axis adapted to our Y carriage plates. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this step, we're gonna make a simple adjustment. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is taking our whole Y gantry system and bringing it forward to ensure squareness in our whole machine profile. So what I'm gonna do is take the tension nut on both sides and I'm gonna rotate that to bring my whole carriage system forward. And basically I'm gonna keep bringing it forward until I reach a stopping point. So basically your wheels will touch the cast corners that are adapted to the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here on the left side. I'm gonna give you a visual representation of the rotation, but I'm also gonna be turning the right side. So here at the tension nut, if you simply rotate one direction, you'll see that the gantry goes in the opposite. So what I'm going to do is bring this all the way forward. And I'm also rotating the right side as well. Okay, so now I'm at a stopping point here. My wheels have touched those cast corners underneath the Y axis and the same on the right side. So you can see on the right side here, my gantry car is also to the front. So basically my whole machine has been brought forward to a stopping point and it is square to my frame. So that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be installing our motor to our X axis, which is gonna be on the second C-beam here of this configuration. We're also gonna be mounting that to the right side of the machine. In this step, we're going to need our NEMA 23 motor, four of our motor mounting end plates, four 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, a tension nut, two of our thrust bearing sets, a quarter inch flexible coupling, four M5 50 millimeter screws, two flange bearings, 16 M5 15 millimeter screws, and of course our lead screw, which is at 15 40 millimeters. And part of this installation will be our tooling. I'm just using a three millimeter, 2.5 and two millimeter ball driver. So to get started, we're gonna to move to the right side of the machine and I'm going to insert the lead screw. So to the second C channel here, 
Second C-beam, I'm going to run my lead screw until I reach my nut block. Once I reach the nut block, I'm simply going to thread through until I reach my second nut block. And I'm going to continue to push through until I've reached the 20 millimeter mark on this side of the C-beam. Once again, just like we did with our Y-axis, we're going to measure out 20 millimeters from the C-beam. Once we have that 20 millimeter mark here on the lead screw, we're going to go ahead and mount our motor mounting end plate. So bringing in the motor mounting end plate, I'm going to adjust the position here and thread in my 15 millimeter screws. I'm going to go ahead and mount this into position. Now that we have our screws in place, I'm going to go ahead and add our additional components here for the tension system, which will include first our flange bearing, next the thrust bearing set. Once again, we're just going to sandwich that together here. Following that, since this is going to be the right side, which is going to receive our motor, we're going to add our flexible coupling here using the eight millimeter bore side to attach to the lead screw. So again, I'm going to keep my set screws upright so I can get that flat portion of the motor shaft to lock in with the set screw. And I'm going to lock this down onto the lead screw. Next, I'm going to bring in my motor, my M5 50 millimeter screws, my 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And I'm going to insert my screws to each corner of the motor. Once again, I want my cables to face down, so that's how I'm going to mount this motor. So with my screws and 40 millimeter spacers in place, I'm going to rotate my motor shaft to the upright position that it's going to be mounted in. And that's going to insert into the flexible coupling. And then I'm going to mount my motor into place. Okay, once I have that into place, I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention to the flexible coupling. And first, tightening down the set screw here onto the motor shaft. I then can rotate my flexible coupling and tighten down each clamp on the flexible coupling. Just going to rotate this back to that upright position. And now I'm going to turn my focus to the top C-beam. And we're simply going to add one of our motor mounting end plates to the top of this to cover up the bare extrusion. So using the 15 millimeter screws, I'm going to go ahead and tie this into place. Once that's in position, let's go ahead and move to the left side and add our motor mounting end plates. Okay, now on the left side of the machine, we're going to focus here on the bottom C-beam first, adding our motor mounting end plate first to the C-beam. Once again, using those M5 15 millimeter screws. Next, add our additional tensioning components to the lead screw. First the flange bearing, and then we're going to sandwich our thrust bearing set. And following that, our tensioning nut, you might need to loosen the set screw. So again, I'm going to rotate this tension nut to where that set screw is upright. It's really going to help for the tensioning process and just lock that down into place. Next, we'll move to the top C-beam and add that motor mounting end plate. Okay, now that we have that mounted into place, next thing we're going to pay attention to is our nut blocks. We want to make sure to tighten down each screw. If you remember, we left the, the nut blocks loose so we could add in our lead screws. So now we're going to go through both our Y-axis and X-axis and tighten down those nut blocks. Starting here first with my first Y actuator, I'm going to go in and simply tighten down each nut block. And you don't want to over tighten this. Basically I use three fingers to really assess the pressure put on the, the nut block. So don't over tighten this, you don't want to deform the plastic or cause any constraints in your lead screw. Next we'll move to the X axis. Next, let's move to our other Y-axis on the right side of the machine. Okay, now that we have our nut blocks tightened down, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our 20 by 20 V-slot rail to the back of 
our second C-beam here on the x-axis to create a cable tray. So in this step we need to gather our 20 by 20 1500 millimeter V-slot rail, two slot washers, two end caps, one M3 T-nut, two single L brackets, two aluminum spacers, two self-tapping screws, two drop-in T-nuts, two M5 45 millimeter screws, two M5 standard T-nuts, two M5 8 millimeter screws. I'll also be using my 3 millimeter ball driver and power drill on this step. So to start this step off, first we need to configure our single L brackets into a position to where we can mount our cable tray. So paying attention to the hole spacing once again on these brackets, we want the hole spacing that's closest to the seam to receive our 45 millimeter screw along with our aluminum spacer and slot washer and drop in T-nut. So that's what the assembly should look like. And we're gonna do the same thing for our second. Once again, making sure that the whole spacing is close to the seam here receives a screw. Now that we have our two single L brackets assembled, we're gonna to move to the back of the machine to mount these into position and prep for our cable tray. So first on the right side of the machine, I'm going to mount my single L bracket to the top channel of the C-beam. Basically you want to make sure that that single L bracket is configured as I have it here. The 20 by 20 rail will rest on top of the single L bracket and will be mounted from underneath. So let's do the same thing for the opposite side of the C-beam. Okay, now that we have the single L brackets in place, I'm now going to take my 20 by 20 V-slot rail and rest it on top of each of the single L brackets. On this side, which is the left side of the machine, I'm gonna take one of my M5 T-nuts, place it into the slot here, and add one of my M5 eight millimeter screws from underneath and mount this 20 by 20 into place. We're going to do the same thing for the opposite end. The only difference on this side is we're going to add one additional component, our M3 T-nut, inside the top of this 20 by 20, and that's for the purpose of mounting our drag chain. So that will be in the wiring and electronics, but we're going to go ahead and prep for that installation by putting our M3 T-nut in place. Next, I'll take my M5 T-nut, place that into position, and mount it with my 8mm screw. Okay, now that the 20 by 20 is mounted into place, next we're going to go ahead and add our end caps to each end of the 20 by 20. Alright, now that we have our last end cap in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be mounting our spoiler boards. So, we'll need 30 of our wood cutting screws, as well as our pre-cut panels, which this is half inch MDF. Each one measures 16 inches in width and 58 inches in length. It's pretty simple to find the MDF. You can go to your local hardware store, Lowe's or Home Depot. The half inch we actually purchased from Home Depot and they do all the cutting for you. So the dimensions you will need is you'll need three pieces at 16 inches in width and 58 inches in length. And this can all be cut off of one sheet of MDF, which is really convenient. So to get started, I basically laid out my panels. And the reason we've done panels is because we want these tracks exposed. And this is gonna be for the mounting of any type of material that you're working on with your CNC machine. So now we have V-slot tracks that are open and available for our mounting options. So you see that the, the front track as well as the back is also gonna be exposed as well as our cross members here. So basically these are gonna reside on top of each of the single L brackets and we're going to mount that with our self-tapping screws. Now for this step you might want to get some assistance. Another person would definitely be handy uh, throughout this whole process because you definitely need to get underneath in order to mount this properly. I'm going to use some additional tables and some supports that way I can drag the machine off my table and work from there. Okay, so as you can see underneath here on the right quadrant, 
I have my spoiler board that's been mounted on top of my single L bracket. So now I'm going to go through and use my wood cutting screws and mount those into place. Okay, now that we have the right quadrant here complete, all of our wood cutting screws are now mounted to our spoiler board. I'm now going to move to the center using a prop, which is basically another table that I'm gonna use so I can get underneath. And then I'm gonna to move to the left side. So now you can see that I have access to the center spoiler board. Basically, I've used another table here and I've split the difference so I have access to these single L brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount that spoiler board into place. Okay, so now I've shifted my machine further to the right so I can access the left quadrant here. Now you can see I have access to all my single L brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and mount that spoiler board into place. Okay, now that we have our spoiler boards mounted in position, you can see the machine profile here and the configuration that was set up with the panels cut. So you see that the slots are exposed and now it's time to move on to the next step. On this step, we're simply going to add some aesthetics to our machine. So this is gonna be the, the finishing part of the mechanical assembly. Uh, so what I have here is two 1500 millimeter slot covers that will come with this bundle, um, as well as our Open Builds machine branding sticker. So the two slot covers, what I'm going to do is add one to the top of the C-beam rail here, and then one to the bottom. So kind of give you that, that uh, contrast here with the silver. It's going to look really sharp. So basically what you have to do is, with the 1500 millimeter slot cover, you're basically going to get a measurement from each end of the C-beam. So basically what I'm gonna do is slide my slot cover behind my gantry plate here. And on this side, you'll see that we have some excess here. So I'm simply gonna snip that off. And I'm gonna snap it into place there. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom here on the C-beam. just like so. And then on the top C-beam here, I'm gonna place my machine branding sticker. And there we go. So now the stickers and the slot covers are in place. So that completes the mechanical portion of this build. Okay, so now that we've assembled the mechanical portion of this build, as you can see, this machine is a tank. It's definitely set up for some serious production. We're looking forward to seeing your projects posted to openbuilds.com. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell for notifications of future videos, and dream it, build it, share it.